So in this video, we're looking at Procreate and how to uh, create your own brush palette. Um, I'm not sure if palette's the right word, but that's what I call it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to go ahead and click plus and just create a new drawing here. Um, I like to resize it there. Not really going to probably any, do any drawing here, but what I'm talking about here is the brush library. Maybe that's the right word for it. You can see here that there's a lot of different uh, default brush libraries and each one of these have their own uh, section here on the right hand side and that's just the palette or the brushes that are in that library so like that's the spray paints library or we have the vintage library or the industrial library those type of things and if you've ever imported or bought your own you may have some that says imported um you say i have uh, this one here is called Petrus Pencils. Um, I really like it. It's got a lot of different pencils there. Um, just really cool for doing different things if you like to do pencil drawings. And you can see here that I've got one called Frank's Brushes right here at the top. Uh, clicking with my mouse instead of the uh, cursor of my, my pen, my eye pen, eye pencil, whatever you want to call it. So you can see I have one here called that, and I've got one here called Stipple that I actually created. And I'm going to show you how to create your own, but also how to clone your own as well. But what you might want to do is create your own palette. So to do that is if you scroll here to the top, um, you can actually just pull down, and there's that plus button right there. And when you click plus, there's one that says Untitled Set. So they're calling that a set. I call it a library. Uh, I'm sure it's called different things. Um, but we could probably, uh, whatever it's called. So what we can do there, of course, then is um, we can click on there and rename. And we call it whatever we want. I'm going to click on the keyboard here, show keyboard. And um, I'm just going to call it temp set, whatever we want to call it there and then return and that's got our temporary set there for our own brush library so then what we could do is if there is a certain ink thing that you like to use or you just want to store you know your the ones that you like best in there like one of them i like to use is a studio pen so what i could do there is i can slide to the left and i can click duplicate and it says studio pen 2. now what i should be able to do now is click that and drag it up to my temp set here and now it should be in my temp set um, now it's called studio pin 2 in my temp set now what I can do is uh, I can click on here and we can rename this it says about this brush I can click on here and um, rename it so what I might want to do is just uh, backspace and call it uh, FD studio pin so I know that it's mine and then I could actually if I wanted to um, I could say made by and put my name and even sign it here if I wanted so if I wanted to um, sign my name to it I could do that um, in whatever you want to do there um, you can create a new reset point but once it's at this point uh, we could say done and it goes back to there so let's go to our temp set again we have this it now says FD studio pen and if I come in here I could actually then change the variations so we have this drawing pad here so you can kind of see uh, what it looks like um, as you draw it's a, just a drawing pad I think you can actually you know, clear drawing pad and see how it goes if you uh, you know start light pressure and then dark or harder pressure it changes the with um, the settings there so what I could do is um, we have the different settings here on the left so we have the stroke path so you can just kind of play around um, you can see as I change it um, the stroke path becomes um, has little dots instead of a stroke a, a solid stroke path um, if you want to change the jitter you can see how that makes it uh, just kind of more of a cloudy look and the fall off is what that means is um, how soon it falls off as you draw so like you see that's a, a short fall off if I want it to be a longer fall off um, I can draw probably pretty much indefinitely there um, let's go ahead and 
clear the drawing pad again. Um, you can see here if I go further, you're just pretty much going to get strokes. But that's what your pin's going to look like as well. So let's go ahead and I just want to show you here. Um, click off the put, the palette there, and I'm just going to draw. And you can see it's just going to create any time that I draw, uh, no matter how big I make the brush, it's just going to create a stroke. Um, so there, there's probably a purpose for that. Um, just not something you would actually use for drawing. So we're going to go here and we're going to modify this and change the fall off to uh, about 10 there. I said about 10 there, so let's just put 10. Um, what I did there, of course, you can slide this and it changes the percentages uh, right here. You can see that's 10%. Um, if I click there and hold my pencil, um, I could actually write 10 there. Um, and it puts 10, or if I hold there just a moment, it, I think if I tap there, with, um, I used my finger at that time, I could actually put in a numeric value there as well. So we could go through each one of these, stabilization, uh, whether it has pressure, we could do a taper. So like if you wanted a taper end, um, which it does have, so it has a little bit of a point to it as it starts and as it ends. You can actually have it as it uh, starts um, or ends. You have like a touch taper, um, how hard or pressure you touch and that type of thing. You could actually change the shape by changing the, some of the behaviors here. Um, you can change the gain, rendering. Those are just things you want to play around with um, so you can see how that changes. So you could actually come back and do uh, different preview settings. Uh, by default, you can change how it looks here in the drawing pad with the color um, and that type of thing. So I'm just going to click Done, and we have that there. So now when we come out here to draw, it's going to pretty much be the same as what we had. Um, there's not really much of a pressure. There's not anything like that. Um, but that's pretty much how you create your own brushes. Uh, so I'll do that one more time. Let's go here. And uh, if there was another one, say like uh, one that I use a lot is airbrushing soft brush. I could swipe to the left again, duplicate. So we now have uh, soft brush one. I can take that to our temp set. Oops. And just drag it over there. And it should be in our, yep, it's in our temp brush there. Now you can create your own, let me go ahead and erase this. Um, yeah, I, I keep thinking, it's like, oh, you can just erase the whole thing at once. Um, anyway. Let's just leave that. So if we're going to create a new brush, we could actually come in here and click the, pro, the plus, and it says uh, stroke properties is what it's called. So we click here. Um, done. Oops. So it's called Untitled Brush. Let's go ahead and change that. Um, about this brush. Sorry, that's where I needed to go. So we could call this whatever we wanted. I could just said test, just done the entitled, but let's do test brush. And then, of course, you can put your name and sign it if you want. those type of things um, we could click off and then you could change whatever you wanted to with this if you want to do a materials or metallic or anything like that uh, I've just generally been playing with the uh, stroke path uh, the spacing those type of things whether you want it tapered um, if you want just a taper at the end so we can do that Um, you change the size. See how it tapers? It's starting to taper there at the end as I stroke. If you wanted to change the opacity of the pencil, you could do that. Um, if you want to change the pressure, and how sharp is the tip? Those type of things. Um, Tip sizes. Let's click 
clear this again. Um, I just like, uh, to me, a lot of times when I'm drawing, I like something to be fluid. Um, so you can just kind of play around with these um, these different things. Notice how the tips change as I click on classic tap uh, taper. Um, it goes back to the default of how it was originally created when Procreate was starting there. Um, so we have our taper link taper sizes. So if you want to link to, I thought it was the top there, but uh, so you can see just how you can create your own brush here. Um, let me go ahead and clear brush sizes one more time. Let's uh, so you can just play around with that. Um, something like this I like to do for like either a cloud or if something I'm drawing with. Um, so we have the test brush. So if I come in here and I want to create. Uh, I might want to do this real small. So if I'm doing like a, a tree and I'm doing uh, branches, I might want something like that that's a little bit uh, fluffier on our on our uh, branches, um, just so that we can create something that's not as solid and rigid. Uh, we'd probably want to change the opacity there a little bit, and just kind of play around with that. You could even change. Uh, you can see how like the uh, color overlaps as you're drawing. We could even do this uh, for even cloud effects. Um, make it larger. So just kind of playing around with your different brush sets. So uh, you could, you know, do it that way. If you decide you didn't want that brush, just slide over and delete. Um, and of course, it'll keep the original. I'm actually going to get go ahead and get rid of this whole set here. Um, delete and I'll delete my temp set there as well. So I hope that you find that useful. Uh, some of the things you can do uh, on creating your own brush set or library set or whatever you want to call it and add your own uh, pencil settings. And of course, uh, one thing that I didn't cover there is you can import your pencil set. Uh, like if you import a library, you could do that there as well. So you can import it into a certain thing. Um, there's the import link right up here at the top and you can just import uh, brushes that you may have purchased elsewhere. And there's plenty of places to get those either free or paid. So I hope you found this useful uh, when you're using your Procreate. Um, let me know if you have any questions and we'll get back to you soon. Thank you.